The United States has five territories. Guam, the U.S. Virgin Islands, the Northern Mariana Islands, American Samoa, and Puerto Rico. One territory in particular, which we will be speaking about today, is Puerto Rico. Only 37% of millennials, according to a study done by the New York Times, actually know that Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens by birth. This came as a shock when Sonia Sotomayor became a U.S. Supreme Court Justice. Sotomayor, a Bronx native, is the daughter of Puerto Rican immigrants. She was a first-generation American, the daughter of Puerto Rican immigrants. The daughter of Puerto Rican immigrants. She is the daughter of Puerto Rican immigrants. She's the daughter of Puerto Rican immigrants. Puerto Ricans are not immigrants. They're people who are on an island of Puerto Rico, but are Americans just as if you lived in Chicago, just as you lived in New York, Houston, or even Hawaii. Puerto Rico has more American citizens than 21 U.S. states, but they have less voting rights than all of them combined. Let's take France, for example. France has more territories than the United States does and gives their citizens more rights than we do on those locations. They are able to vote for president, they're able to fight in the military, and they have the same amount of rights if they lived in Paris. After the United States won the Spanish-American War, Puerto Rico was ceded to the U.S. in 1898 through the Treaty of Paris. Puerto Rico then became an unincorporated, organized territory of the United States with Commonwealth status through a series of judicial decisions by the Supreme Court known as the Insular Cases and the enactment of several statutes by the United States Congress. In 1900, Congress enacted the Foraker Act, which established a civil government on the territory. And then in 1917, the United States gave Puerto Ricans U.S. citizenship by the enactment of what is known as the jones shafferth Act. Now, we all know that Puerto Rico is not a state, but rather from a 1901 Supreme Court case, Downs v. Bidwell, Puerto Rico is a territory that is foreign to the United States in a domestic sense. The court reasoned that Puerto Rico and the new territories were, quote, inhabited by alien races, so governing them, quote, according to Anglo-Saxon principles would be, for the time, impossible. Some of the laws that pertain to the states, Puerto Rico is exempt from, and a lot of people like that to this day. Congress decided bonds from Puerto Rico would be triple tax exempt. Those who buy them don't have to pay federal, state, or local taxes on the bonds. Puerto Rico went even further to incentivize investment onto the island by including language in their constitution that said that debt, quote, shall be paid first and other disbursements therefore be made after which means that before they pay for things like Medicaid, education, pensions, salaries, things like that, they would pay for their debt. In the year 2017, Puerto Rico announced that they were going through a financial crisis. It will be very hard to do that payment. It will be almost impossible. Uh, and, and let me put this very clear. We are out of cash. This is not politics. This is math. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, Puerto Rico's unemployment rate is at a staggering 10.2%. Compare that to Wisconsin's 2.9% or our national average of a 4.1%. Puerto Rico is about $73 billion in debt. When you break that down to every man, woman, and child on the island, that's $22,000 per person. So how did Puerto Rico become bankrupt? Well, over the last 10 years, 18 different government entities issued a wide range of bonds to the island. These bonds were to pay for things like schools, hospitals, salaries, old debts, pensions, among other things. A lot of political commentators have compared Puerto Rico to Greece. So has Puerto Rico become America's Greece? Now let's talk about statehood. Many Puerto Ricans even disagree on whether they should be state or not a state. But we're just going to go with what has happened in the last 20 years. In 1998, Puerto Rico had a referendum in the 100th anniversary of being part of the United States. In that referendum, they determined that 50% of the island did not want to become a state or become an independent nation. Only 46.6% said that they wanted to become a state. Fast forward to 2012, 
they held yet another referendum under Governor Luis Ford Jr where they had 60% say that they wanted statehood. Because there were 500,000 blank ballots in the referendum in 2012, another referendum was needed, and that took place in 2017. This referendum offered three options, statehood, independence, or current territorial status. 97% of the island voted for statehood, but there was only a 23% voter turnout. Governor Rosselló is stated by saying, quote, Colonialism is not an option for Puerto Rico. It's a civil rights issue. The time will come in which the United States has to respond to the demands of 3.5 million Americans seeking the absolute democracy. One person who knows this firsthand and who I had the opportunity of speaking to was former Governor Luis Fortunio. Governor Fortunio was Secretary of Economic Development and Commerce for Puerto Rico from 1994 until 1996. In 2004 to 2008, he was the resident commissioner or delegate to Congress from Puerto Rico. And from 2009 to 2012, he was governor of the great Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. During your administration, you cut massive government spending by 20%, lowered taxes and raised Puerto Rico's bond status to the highest that it's been in 35 years, while our nation collectively was going through a massive recession and having massive amounts of government spending. How did you do that? Well, I, 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 first of all, I had an excellent team of professionals that were assisting me in this. Uh, secondly, I, uh, I fully understood that uh, uh, doing what I believe was the right thing uh, would probably have a high political cost, but I, I was elected to do the right thing, not to uh, do what was uh, uh, ex expedient politically. So, so that's, that's how we did it. I never thought, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, back uh, look back at all and, and as to whether what we were doing was was going to cost me or not politically. Tell us about the events and challenges that you faced during your term and what you did to overcome them. Sure, I came in with the uh, huge uh, deficit. Uh, it was uh, forty four percent of revenues uh, uh, in the midst of the global financial uh, meltdown as, at the same time, and I. Uh, 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 so that that was uh, truly challenging, and and uh, and what, so we had to uh, while mending uh, uh, the fiscal side of the equation, we uh, were working hard in trying to get our economy moving again, and that certainly that that was uh, quite challenging. But again, I, I was blessed with a, a great team of professionals that uh, they knew what they were doing and uh, uh, their goals were clearly uh, identified and, uh, and they could execute what needed to be done. Then candidate Donald Trump uh, said this on the campaign trail. He said, quote, there are 3.7 million American citizens living in Puerto Rico. As citizens, they should be entitled to determine for themselves their political status. The will of the Puerto Rican people in any status referendum should be considered as Congress follows through on any desired change in status for Puerto Rico, including statehood, end quote. Do you believe that statehood would help Puerto Rico speed up the process in getting rid of its debt and the problems that it's going through today? Well, to begin with, it will get the economy moving again, and, and, and that's, that's key. Uh, one of the uh, uh, problems that the island faces is the uh, lack of understanding by uh, 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 investors uh, and, and general public uh, of what the island is 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 like, whether it's a ter you know a state or independent country or whatever, it's really a U.S. territory, and, and then uh, trying to understand better uh, how can that uh, uh, you know how, how can can uh, 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 an investment be safe. In a place where they uh, that they don't understand makes it uh, uh, quite challenging uh, to say the least. So I, I have no doubts that 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 will have a, a, a tremendous positive effect uh, moving forward. From your experience, are the Puerto Rican people uh, accepting of statehood, or is it still 50-50? Well, it's historically been close. However, uh, in the last uh, two occasions in which the electorate has been asked about this question uh, 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 it uh, the uh, uh, voters have favored statehood so I believe uh, the uh, time has come uh, where uh, it might you know this is uh, starting to 
uh, the balance has been tilted in favor of statehood. And I, I've always felt it was a matter of time, and, and it seems like it, it's starting to occur. Why has Congress, in your opinion, backed down in recent years and not allowed a vote or considered a vote on the referendum from 2017 that voted 97 percent for statehood, although only having a 23 percent turnout? Well, this is uh, uh, clearly a, a in Congress. A few things are uh, happen unless it's it's a, perceived as an immediate crisis, and uh, and uh, changing the status of the island is not perceived in Washington as an immediate crisis, and that I believe that's that's what's uh, actually uh, uh, make it very difficult for the island to to be able to uh, uh, to uh, grab the attention of, of of those that need to make these decisions. Uh, moving forward in Washington. Sure. Our party, the, the GOP, has supported statehood for years. Um, even President Ronald Reagan supported statehood for Puerto Rico. What can we do to encourage the GOP to get back on track and to support statehood for the island, as Rick Scott has just said um, just a couple of days ago? Uh, well, uh, Rick's, Governor Scott understands uh, well the island because of the million uh, uh, the one million uh, 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 American citizens of Puerto Rican descent that reside in Florida. But for many others, uh, the concept of Puerto Rico is so foreign and they don't understand uh, 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 the details of, 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 of our relationship that it makes it very, very difficult uh, uh, to uh, get them to even uh, think about the island uh, uh, at all. So I, what I would say is uh, that you have a situation that requires uh, an, uh, educating uh, those that uh, are uh, uh, in positions of, of authority uh, across the country to, uh, to really get the island um, uh, to uh, be taken, or, or the status of the island be taken into uh, 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 they you know getting to their radar screen at this moment that that hasn't happened uh, and and again as I was mentioning earlier uh, the balance is getting tilted down in the island uh, in favor of statehood people are getting to understand that the current territorial status is a a problem uh, but but uh, again it takes two parties to uh, uh, move this forward not just the voters and government of Puerto Rico but certainly. Congress and their con uh, and, and the constituents uh, 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 to whom they uh, members of Congress must respond to. So again, education uh, of us to these issues is key, and I'm only hopeful that uh, it, it will uh, it will get to the point where people, act, you know, both uh, sides uh, on the mainland and and in Puerto Rico will get to understand the need to address this as quickly as possible. Moving forward, uh, Puerto Rico has been having what has been called an exodus of people moving to the mainland United States, into Florida, Chicago, and New York, and that's been going on for years. Um, but how do you think that can be? Re uh, how do you think that could be re uh, reversed? A lot of people are calling that a brain drain on the island, as a lot of the degree holders and doctors and lawyers and things like that are leaving towards the mainland. The economy has to move uh, uh, forward and grow at the same rate that it is growing in, in the mainland, at least. And and for that to happen, uh, 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 proper uh, fiscal and economic policies must be implemented. And uh, so that is a challenge because it's not necessarily politically attractive uh, to do everything that needs to be done. Hurricane Maria devastated uh, Puerto Rico. Was your family affected personally? And what do you think about the current status of the holdup on certain repairs on the island? Sure, yes. I mean, everyone in Puerto Rico is affected, my family included. Uh, um, they were all without power for, for weeks and weeks. Uh, 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 I flew down several times uh, on private planes, taking equipment and supplies and materials down to the island. And on one occasion, I. I I brought my parents up here uh, because, again, they, they, uh, their age, they, 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 it was very challenging for them to handle uh, what was going on. So indeed, um, uh, everyone was was affected by it, including my family. Uh, thank goodness their homes are fine, and now they have power back, and and things are getting back on track. 
in terms of, of the slow pace of getting things done, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I, I only hope that things uh, will pick up speed uh, pretty soon, of course, at the beginning. The need was to uh, guarantee that uh, uh, the basics uh, were uh, taken care of. I believe we uh, have a, uh, gotten to that point or are very close to it. And uh, my hope is that the next step uh, will be uh, then guaranteeing that uh, the rest of the reconstruction that ought to occur and that will take longer uh, will be expedited. Regarding the Jones Act um, and even the insular cases, how has how that, in your opinion, affected Puerto Rico and how can we move forward from them? Well, uh, treating the island different from, from uh, the 50 states uh, is an issue. Uh, it, uh, and uh, so that's, uh, that, that has affected the island. The Jones Act affects any any coastal uh, 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 states, you know, uh, uh, in one way or another. However, uh, it, it affects even more uh, uh, those that are not contiguous uh, to the rest of the states because uh, those 40, uh, the lower 48 have an option, and that is they can truck uh, whatever the materials, uh, uh, goods and, and supplies must be uh, transported from one state to another or could use train. But in the case of Puerto Rico or Hawaii, for example, that is not the case. Will statehood fix Puerto Rico's problems? Who knows? Should Puerto Rico become the 51st state? You decide. <laughs> It's almost like praying.